Garbage men of Reddit, what's the most illegal, strange, or valuable thing you have seen while gathering people's trash? Story 1. This was in the early 90s. I was emptying the public trash cans in a city center in mid-England. I saw this really expensive bound leather photograph holder book. I took it, lobbed it in the cab to check out later. After work, I started looking through it, and it started with these fresh-faced young soldiers laughing and gurning at the camera. They were doing their training, I think, in some leafy camp in England. Then it switched to an alarms hole, awful desert. It was the time of Gulf War Mom 1. The smiles went and then the carnage came. Busted tanks, cars and people. Fires, death and destruction. Almost unrecognizable burnt corpses. Just horrible, horrible stuff. Then I stopped looking and threw it away as the owner had intended. I often wonder who threw that away. I hope it was the soldier trying to forget rather than one of his grieving relatives. That was more than 20 years ago, but I think of that poor boy a lot. P.S. On a lighter note, I also found a ton of adult content. People really throw a lot of adult content away. Also, a lot of books and some antique bottles and lamps I still have today. I was only a bin man for a year. Story 2. I got a job sorting recycling in the back of a rubbish van one summer when I was a student at uni. We did a different route in the area each day, so that each house had its recycling picked up once a week. Every week without fail, this old man's recycling box would be full to the brim with transsexual adult content. So full it would require two of us to pick it up and load it. I have no problem with the adult content itself, whatever floats your boat, but just the sheer volume of it was jaw-dropping. The guy must have been either some sort of filthy Rupert Murdoch at the helm of a trans-adult content empire, or literally spending pound 100 s a week on these magazines. The funniest part of it was that our truck driver was the most homophobic man I've ever met. He once leaned out of the truck window and called some guy a fool because he was wearing a nice pair of boots. The type of guy who hates us so much that there is no question in my mind that we was a repressed closet dweller himself. Anyway, we'd always steal a couple of the magazines and plant them in all his stuff. Because he never had to sort any of the trash himself, he had no idea it was us who was doing it, so would always tell us about it, thinking we were on his side. One time we tore out a picture of a trans lady with a particularly massive, girthy boner and stuck it around his debit card in his wallet. He came to work fuming the next day, and told us that he'd been out to a nice meal with his fiance and some of his friends. And when he went to pay, the picture popped out of his wallet in front of her, the waiter and his friends. He was close to having a nervous breakdown by the time I left. Every day was like dork roulette for him, never knowing where the next trans willy was coming from. Another horrible experience was when someone stuck their dead cat in the food waste bin. We made our homophobic truck driver's life a living hell by planting trans adult content in all his stuff. Story 3. Finally my time to shine. I worked as sort of a secondary garbage man. I was on the truck when they needed an extra hand or the main guy was sick. And from the short time, I have a list of the things I found and some of the more valuable things the other guys acquired. Mind you, this is from a small Canadian town, a working PS3, a working iPhone 4. This was before the 5 was introduced. Two laptop computers. Monitors were broken and nothing else. Multiple desktop PCs. An FM transmitter. Every tool you would ever need. An N64 with a few games. Five bottles of unopened hard liquor, all sorts of hunting equipment, and furniture. Lots of good furniture that I ended up refurbishing and selling. A lot of what I found was technology simply because I had an eye for it. The main garbage man had a room in his house dedicated to the things he found. From $400 snowboards to full toolboxes and audio systems. And the truck driver made about an extra $500 every two months from recycling cans people would throw out. I also stumbled across a $100 bill once at the landfill. Story 4. Growing up. Our garbage man would always stop to say what's up while we were outside playing. He was friends with my dad, so it wasn't weird or anything. We called him John the Prophet BC. He was always dropping wise phrases on us. We later found out these were just song lyrics. For example, carry on my wayward son, there will be peace when you are done. Anyway, he was always bringing us cool stuff he found. Bikes, MP3 players, etc. Fast forward 10 years or so, I'm living in this house, WBU4 of my buddies. John the Prophet is still our garbage man. He would often stop with his latest finds, usually or graphic photos of girls he was curious if we knew. Being a small town, we often did. One time after Christmas, he brings us a brand new Xbox 360 still in the box. He said he found it on his route. His kids already had one. Coolest guy ever. I still consider him a close friend. Best part about that 360, I was volunteering at an after-school program back then. Shortly after this, one of my kids came in complaining that his dad tossed his new Xbox BC he his brothers were fighting over it. Story 5. Occasional janitor after hours worker here. Not a garbage man per se. But I have done the job of picking up other people's trash. From years of cleaning up different bars and clubs, I have found 
Jewelry, change, loose bills, tools and decorations, barware, and valuable scraps from doing demolition and renovations. As an after-hours cleaner, I have found cash, IDs, and other personal effects. Many times I find packs, I don't puff, and even medicates. Non-user. Confiscated alcohol usually gets put in the back as it is illegal to have on premises, and many times this means free cans of beer or alcohol. Only if it's unopened, though. These sorts of jobs have given me the idea to go around on garbage days and check out what people have put out to trash. I have had some luck going around finding electronics, furniture, appliances, all sorts of things. Example. Came home from the bar one night and grabbed a 25 CD changer on my way home. Also, working on job sites for demolitions yields lots of valuable scrap. Steel, metal, appliances, perfectly good hauls that will net you. And don't get me started on what I find on the ground just waking around. Once I went to Oktoberfest and found 11 drink tickets, $25 in cash. The next night I went out again and nabbed 6 tickets and $32.50. Drink tickets were $1.68 each. All on the floor of the venue, nobody else even noticed. Came out with pocket money both nights, doing the cleanup crew work, waste management, property management, janitorial services, really helps you develop an eye for what people are willing to toss out, lose, and neglect. And there is something to be said for these professionals. They learn to understand the wasteful tendencies of people in general. As stated elsewhere in this thread, people will throw out just about anything. And yet one man's trash can very well be another's treasure. Story 6. Seasonal janitor here, not really a garbage man per se, but I empty a lot of garbages. I found herb and alcohol which I kept meth pipes needles which I did not. Let's see, I found a Razor scooter last year that was pretty sweet. Um, an iPod Nano, a car stereo face, cash, $20. Once found a wallet at one of our parks with about 5,000 cash in hundreds. Saw the guy in the park and returned it though. No reward. Dork. Pocket knives, abandoned kittens, lots of lighters, the list goes on and on. Edit, to add more geocaching containers, lots of boots, fireworks. One time I found a guy passed out in a bathroom with a needle in his arm. My buddy who worked there also found a whole bunch of dirty panties, a dildo, a nice metal chalice. Also, I used to collect McDonald Monopoly pieces I found in the trash. Almost won a fiat. Story 7. I posted this before in another thread. I cleaned streets as a student summer job. It's well paid, only three weeks in the summer instead of the usual four, and it's not nearly as disgusting as people think. This is in Belgium, by the way, not the U.S. Here's the story about the most disgusting thing I've ever found. I was walking around, picking up garbage, when I noticed a little black bag that was standing in a small gap between a parking meter and the wall behind it. I grabbed it and, because my curiosity got the better of me, looked inside. I was expecting there to be some random trash inside, but instead a smell greeted me that instantly made me want to throw up. Inside the little black bag was a used pocket cat. It was basically swimming in what I assumed then was a guy's juices. Judging by the smell and the look of the whole thing, it was used multiple times over an extended period without cleaning and then dumped. Thanks, random stranger, for the beautiful, life-affirming experience. Edit. Oh yeah. And I just remembered that a friend of mine, who worked a summer job cleaning the beach, found a severed foot that washed up on shore. Turns out it was from some guy who fell off a boat and got sucked into its propeller. Most of the time, it's the most boring job in the world. But sometimes you get fun, interesting days, if you're lucky. Wouldn't want to do it full-time, but I can recommend it as a summer job. Story 8. Not a garbage man, but I would inspect foreclosed houses after the occupants had either vanished or been evicted. Stainless steel handgun from Japan backed in factory-molded styrofoam blocks as if it was a pair of stereo speakers. This was sitting on top of a copy of some guy's arrest record. Two dozen dead German shepherds, I think, in garbage bags. A single mannequin's leg stuffed into a pair of sweatpants. Hand grenade, pin in place, no hole drilled in the bottom. The bomb squad said they didn't want people calling them directly. The PD dispatcher told me to hide it in the yard, and they would eventually send somebody over to pick it up. A large stack completely filled a one-car garage to a height of about five feet of gallon-sized plastic bottles, think vinegar jugs, with no labels holding a clear liquid of unknown composition. A neighbor said the guy had been running an unlicensed pesticide operation out of his garage a console stereo system that had several different radio bands and a phonograph recorded so you could record your own vinyl discs at home. In an old school, a forgotten high school chemistry lab from the 60s, jars and jars of things like thermite, sticks of yellow phosphorus submerged in some yellow-colored liquid that had evaporated to the point where there was only one-eighth inches of liquid covering the top of the sticks, and the slightest movement would cause the top end of the sticks to be uncovered. This was all on the same racks as a jar of mercury, about a pound of powdered asbestos, spools of magnesium ribbon, quantities of powdered sulfur, nitroglycerin, 
potassium permanganate cans that had rusted through. They still contained something, but the labels were too corroded to read. Acid nitric and too many other bottles to read as just being in that room for a couple of minutes gave me a splitting headache. It had apparently been a well-stocked chemistry lab for high school students decades previously. Then one day the school closed, so they locked the door, and nobody had entered it, much less cleaned it out, for decades. Story 9. Not a bin man, but when I was 13, a friend of mine, and I were doing chores for our neighbor. It was punishment for low grades. We mowed the lawn, dusted his trophies, you know, that kind of stuff. Then it came to taking out the trash. I was holding the black tea rash bag as I dragged it out the door, and the handle snapped off and the bag split. Out spilled some scrunched up torn paper. Wasn't sure what it was at first. After realizing that all the pieces formed a picture, we sat there for a good 15 minutes, trying to make sense out of it. It was a picture of 40-year-old Betty White in a bikini. Arguments were had, but we eventually split the picture in half. I got those dang legs. Story 10. I was 11 years old. Recently transferred to Misawa, Japan, military family. We lived off of the military base. One beautiful morning, I woke up and began walking down the local streets to explore. I nearly had a picker heaven stroke. Everywhere I looked, there was amazing trash on the side of the road. I found a slot machine, went and got my wagon, brought it home. I found a mini grandfather clock, boom box with removable speakers, electric fans, a futon, a rice paper wooden room divider. For hours, these items came home in the wagon and I stored them in our shed. Later that day, while I rested, a policeman showed up at our door. My mother woke me up. It turned out I had inadvertently stolen these items from Japanese families that were simply cleaning out their homes on a nice day, then moving their items back in. This provoked a family crisis that eventually passed. On that day, I learned about the too-good-to-be-true feeling. It has served me well ever since. Story 11. Not a garbage man, but my dad told me a story of his time in the military and about the military dump outside the base. He was in the Navy stationed at Guantanamo. Every once in a while, he and a few of his friends would go down to the military dump scrounging for stuff. It was amazing what the military would throw out. Tools, generators, appliances. Anything that no longer had a use would just be tossed into the landfill. One day, a large crate was dumped there, about the size of a large truck. One end was open, so my dad checked it out. Dot, dot, dot. Inside was a brand new ACDC building generator. The ones that large hospitals used for emergency power. Apparently, the base did not need it when it arrived, so instead of shipping it back, they dumped it in the landfill. It sat there for about a week, then a bulldozer pushed it into the bay. I remember that story every year I pay my taxes. Story 12. Not a garbage man. But one day as I was walking home, I was passing through a local physician's parking lot and noticed a rather large box in the dumpster. My curiosity got the best of me and I looked. It was filled with Medicaid sample bottles. Not sure if anyone saw me, but I took it and briskly continued home. I googled every last bottle. Sadly, they were all expired blood pressure cholesterol medications. I wish I had kept them since I have high blood pressure now. Eat it. Other dumpster finds. One time behind GameStop, there was an Xbox 360 box with a valid code for a month of Xbox Live. That was cool. And behind a health food store, I found tinctures of various stuff. One was broken and I got oil of some kind all over my hand, so I gave up. Story 13. I'm not a sanitation worker, but I lived in Stuttgart, Germany, back in the early 90 AS. They had something called Spermal Day, bulk refuse where people would put out their bulky items for collection. But a lot of useful and even brand new stuff would go out, so it was common practice for a lot of people to drive around, particularly in the rich neighborhoods, to see if something good was available. I had a lot of furniture, skis, bicycles, etc. that I had gotten this way. On this particular one, I found a wooden roll-top desk that only needed some sanding and refinishing. When I got it home and started taking it apart, one of the locked drawers had a binder with U.S. Department of Defense schematics for what looked like a howitzer cannon. The whole thing had lots of restricted access stamped all over it. I called the U.S. Embassy, this was at night, and left a voicemail in their emergency contact line. They called me within an hour and two MPs and two crew cuts in suits showed up at my house in less than one half hour after that. After a lot of questions, thorough examination, and some arguing about who would keep the desk, they took a lot of pictures of it and said they might send someone out later to collect it, but never did. They asked me to keep the incident to myself and left. I never heard anything else about that event. My guess is that the documents were in the possession of a military worker living in the city, and someone in his her household wasn't careful about throwing stuff away. The fact that people who looked like CIA showed up in my house so fast is the exciting part. Very the Americans. Story 14. I used to be the garbage collector for the overnight shift at one of the busiest shopping malls in Ottawa, Canada. One night, as I'm running the cardboard compactor, I decide to get in a little hockey practice. 
grab me this old stick that we keep in the compactor room for unjamming the machine and start taking slap shots against the wall using a pile of small boxes, say 5x5. One of these boxes hits the wall with a sound indicating that it is not in fact empty like its fellows. It was a box marked 8-ounce pewter beer stein, and it was from one of those places in the mall that engraves things. Anyway, off the wall it bounces and out tumbles a sizable human turd. The funny part is that it was carefully sealed up in there waiting for me, like someone had taken out their nice new engraved pewter beer stein and decided, time to go, and filled her up with stuff just for me. My only other working theory is that someone didn't like the engraving job done for them and sent back the box full of stuff in protest. Then the engraving place decided to make it my problem. Security had to be called biohazard apparently, and to this day I haven't taken another cleaning job. I certainly didn't get paid enough to deal with that stuff. Story 15. I used to be a garbage truck driver for my town. Since then, I moved up to highway maintenance. In 2008, a Middle Eastern family accidentally threw out a garbage bag filled with $200,000. When they realized it was gone and where it went, they called the sanitation office, and lucky for them, they caught the truck before it dumped. The truck dumped the garbage on the ground in our backyard, and the family had to dig through it themselves to find it. And they did. They were literally covered with stuff when they left. Worst part about that is we had to clean it all up afterwards. I wondered to myself if there was something fishy going on, but the police told us not to talk about it with anyone. Hasn't been brought up since. Story 16. I'm sure it's too late for me, but I was a garbage man for a number of years in the early 90s. I live in a very small town that is mostly Italian, and one morning we were sent out to collect the dumpster from a truck stop on the outskirts of town. As the truck was pouring the contents of the dumpster into the back, I saw a wet box break apart, and inside were a bunch of submachine guns and magazines of ammo. I stopped the winch, told the driver, and we both decided to play dumb, not difficult, and pretend we didn't see them. So I continued on and crushed it all as though I hadn't seen them. I just remember being afraid that they were dropped off for a pickup or exchange, and if some saw me taking them or I was found with them, it'd be a really bad day for me. Also, this was before the internet was very big at all, but we used to find photo albums. Those were always a great find because it was almost guaranteed that if someone was throwing away a photo album, there were Polaroids of their naked white trash slot girlfriend in there. So we had a big stash of photo albums back at base from over the years. Story 17. I worked at landfills for 23 years. The most illegal would be plant. We used to have the various police departments in our area come and dump all the marijuana that got taken cut down at grow ops that got busted. Sometimes they had so much they had to rent a truck to haul it to us. Unfortunately, the cops would hang around and make sure we dumped a truckload or two of really nasty garbage on top of it and then smoosh all that stuff together by running over it with the a couple of dozen times. Second most illegal was a trailer load of BB guns that weren't legal because they looked too much like real guns. If anyone ever breaks into my house, he's going to find himself staring down the barrel of what looks like a 44 Desert Eagle. Edit because one too many S's turns a gun into a piece of cake. As for strangest, it would have to be the story 18. Not a garbage man, but my buddy Curb surfed a neighbor's place while moving out and found a huge box of baseball cards. For those who don't know, most baseball cards made between 1980 and 1995 are completely worthless, but I collect and it was a nice gesture. I dug though about half of them one night and found literally nothing of value of any more than 10 cents or so. The next night I was trying to avoid work and decided to continue on my exercise in futility. At the bottom of the box I noticed some cards that looked different on their sides. Somehow, some real vintage desirable cards had found their way. Among the, a complete set of 1957 Elvis cards, a complete 1950s Topps Western set, a large group of 1954 Bowman football cards with Hall of Famers, and a 1958 near-complete set of Topps cards with Jim Brown rookie. In all, easily worth dollar $1,000 equal sign dollar $1,500 or so. Story 19. I may be a little late to the party, but after my father quit being a commercial fisherman, he became what he calls a skilled general laborer. In essence, a great way to describe the job is, we are the people that does what no one else wants to do, not even garbage men, but with skills to beat the rest. Over the course of working with my father, I will list the best things and most notable. 97 Nissan, can't remember what model. 95 Ford Crown Vic, non-police issue W slash 20,000 miles. Two Bose 301 bookshelf speakers in plastic. Two Yamaha speakeras. Literally a 7x4 table covered in 2 inches of costume and a good bit of real jewelry. Entire collection Playboy, including all the collectible ones. Entire Nat Geo collection. Entire Sport Illustrated. Entire Time collection. Entire People's Magazine collect. Stamps and coins up the Yazoo. 
Technics turntables. Unspeakable amounts of adult content, ranging from hand-drawn incest RPE adult content to upsetting name it. Honestly, after cleaning that guy's house out, I said I would never mention that job and what was found. Well, guess I broke that promise. Musical instruments with precious stones. My favorite was a trumpet with mother of pearl and rubies. So many vinyl records, it's not funny. Everything from moldy to $2,000 records. Furniture. My room at home and my place at college are both more or less full furnished with other people furniture, ranging from Ikea to what was that guy's name who handcrafted this redwood accent table? I always take the later. Booze, plant, grow gear, shrooms. Illegal, you ask? Well, how about firearms with numbers removed? Ammo, pipe bomb materials, trafficking amounts of pills, a taxidermy piece of an endangered turtle. Two boats. Lots of famous artists work. Some of my favorites were Man Ray, Van Gogh, Picasso, Vermeer, Monet, Ansel Adams, Galen Rowell, and many, many, many more. Literally 2.25 tons of lead bars that came from a 74-year-old dude's basement, a crystal wax seal that was over 100 years old, and much, much more. I have come to learn that people will always throw out perfectly good things worth a stuffed ton of money. Just need to have a trained eye and trash can be a literal gold mine. Found all that costume jewelry. For those who are curious, my father does lots of cleanouts for banks, businesses, multi-house buildings, and families. All in a well-off town. Some of the stuff I have seen is mind-blowing. Edit. List didn't come out right. Added some illegal stuff I remembered. Story 20. It's sad to say, but in this day and age, you don't want something. The first thing most people think is to throw it out. Never mind there is Kijiji or Craigslist to resell, Value Village and other places to donate unwanted items. I used to work at Roger's corporate head office and they were upgrading some of their office space. Dumpsters full of desks, chairs, books, binders, office supplies, even TVs. The loading dock manager let some of us take a TV if we wanted. I couldn't help but think of all those kids in other countries who could benefit from all these office supplies. Heck, not even in other countries. They should pass some sort of legislation that states, if you throw it out, it's a free for all to whomever wants it. I really don't get this BS about not letting employees take stuff home that is destined for the trash compactor anyway. Have a mega discounted sale for the employees if you are worried about them intentionally damaging the product. Either way, it's such a massive shame that there are people out there living in poverty, yet all this stuff gets thrown away or destroyed. Slash rant. Story 21. Although I'm not a trash man, I was in charge of security for several large dorms in Virginia's second largest university. I would help with room inspections when the students moved out for the summer break. We would split the dorms up into sections, each checking the rooms in their assigned section. Whatever was left in the rooms by the students was fair game. It was like a game or legalized looting. You would not believe what these kids would leave behind. Televisions, computers, clothes, shoes, VCRs. This was a while ago. Hey, food, canned or jarred food, furniture, CDs, stereos, and much more. I think part of it was from student aid refunds. I believe some of these kids would buy things with their refund checks, then be unable to take their new toys home with them because they would be unable to explain to mom and dad that they had spent their entire refund check on guilty pleasures. The best thing I ever found was a very large television, probably 50 minus 60, rear projection of course, but top notch for that time. Heavy as hell, but worth the struggle. I also found a large plastic water cooler bottle filled with change. After rolling the coins, Pre-Coinstar days, you kids have it so easy now, huh? I figured out I had over $300 in coins. These are all things that were willingly left behind. We didn't start this process until two days after last day to move out, giving everyone ample time. The lease agreement signed by the residents stated clearly they would forfeit anything left after the end of the semester. One student left his entire wardrobe, and he had very expensive taste in clothes and shoes. He was much smaller than me, but I called a few friends, and they took all of his name brand clothes and shoes. It was always fun. The crew would have walkie-talkies and there was constant chatter. You won't believe what I just found in 343A. Does anyone want a leather lazy boy? It's in good shape, but I don't need it. I found more adult content. Story 22. I work at the dump part-time on the weekends, where we mostly get residents rather than contractors and businesses. For the oddest thing, some gentleman has come in with a deceased dog expecting it to be okay to throw away. Many people come in and joke that they are here to throw away their old lady or their mutt. So when this gentleman came in, he said he was disposing of his dog. So I took it as a joke, laughed, and asked to look in the trunk. When I opened it and saw a wrapped blanket and opened it to find his dead dog. So I had to kick him out, but opening the blanket, I got scared. I've also had people throw away the remnants of their grow ops with a lot of plants, but no bud on them. And in one case, the gentlemen were followed by an investigator who took photographs of all the things they threw away. You would be surprised with the amount of electronics still working or will a minor issue that people throw away.
I've stocked my student house with multiple TVS and electronics so we can be watching the games at once or one person could be gaming and the other watching a show. My buddy has gotten a dune buggy from work, but his dad has a shop on his property so he fixed it quite easily. For money, we look for old couches or dryers and smash them up. It is almost like a box of chocolate you never know what you're going to get. For a lot of the video games though, I take them home to give to my little cousins or the kid I volunteer to be his big brother. So when they come by, they always expect something. And when I don't have anything, they seem to get upset. Other than my little brother. Oh, and being Reddit and all I thought this may interest you all, we get a lot of video game systems, but they are almost always the Xbox. Ill estimate for every PlayStation we get 20 Xbox came beforehand. If you want any weird or funny stories, let me know and I'll tell them. But I feel like this post is getting a bit long and nobody may read it, so I may just be wasting my time. Story 23. Oliver Reed. Wasn't strictly working as a binman, but doing a survey for the council that involved me riding around on the dust carts counting bags of rubbish put out by businesses for some obscure reason. The round involved collecting from Oliver Reed's house, now owned by Jordan, I think, and we found him passed out amongst his rubbish bags one morning. Apparently, the guys that were on that round were used to seeing him, and he frequently invited them to join him for a sneaky drink. On one occasion, he was dressed as a pirate and commandeered their dust cart and joined them for the rest of the round shouting piratical things at passers-by in cars. The binmen got in trouble for that, but once sober, he rang their bosses and apologized and took the blame. Story 24. A little off topic, as I'm not a garbage man, but when I was a little kid, I had this giant pink plastic horse which I loved. The day came when despite much crying and pleading, my mom put her foot down and decided it was time to throw it out. So onto the curb it went, never to be seen again, except about two weeks later, I saw a garbage truck with a giant pink plastic horse tied to the front of the truck's grill. Apparently, the crew saw it and decided it would be a great mascot. I was super happy to see it and grateful for the G-men for appreciating my toy by giving it a new home and a great view of the roads. Edit. Even as a four-year-old, I knew it was kind of filthy and made of cheap plastic, so my mom was just trying to be hygienic, not mean. Story 25. A bit different than a garbage man, but I worked at a sewage treatment plant over the summer before 12th grade. Just basic grass cutting, painting, etc. One job was to rake the screen, which was basically this metal grate that caught bigger waste coming down from the sewer drains in our small town. Rats, extra large turds, shoes, etc. However, during that summer, I also found a total of $83 in cash that got stuck to the screen. $60 of it at once inside of a wallet with nothing else in it. Then a few bucks here and there. I know what you're thinking. I'm gross for picking up money out of sewer water. A quick spray of the hose and it's like new. In 1998, you could actually buy a fair amount of stuff with $83, haha. -ha. Story 26. I'm late to the party, but I worked in the trash industry for six years. I hauled it to the landfill for two years and loaded it for four. While hauling it, I found all kinds of copper wire, unopened liquor, and Walmart and Kmart returns. I'm not entirely sure why they chucked the items instead of reselling, but it was their loss. During my years loading it at the transfer, I realized that you'd be shocked at the things companies throw out. The drivers who picked up the trash would keep the loaders and some of the bosses in the loop. They would call ahead about what they had picked up. Every Tuesday, a load would come in from a high-end electronics store. I still use the speaker system, receiver, and the DVD player I got from those loads. I worked the night shift at my first loading gig, and sometimes the local Budweiser warehouse would throw out beer. They weren't throwing out bad beer. They were throwing out entire pallets because a couple of the cases were damaged. Needless to say, I filled my truck. Another time, a liquor store had a fire, and the insurance company made them destroy their stock. Almost all of the bottles had a little soot on it, but were drinkable. I filled an entire storage unit with liquor. It was nice to have my own liquor store. The Walmart loads were always full of toys in the box and working electronics. You'd be shocked to see what companies throw out. Also, when people pass away and the family doesn't want to deal with their stuff, it goes in a dumpster. I have several Playboys from the 40s and 50s SS, along with just about anything you can think of. Story 27. Finally, I can contribute. But I'm super late. Here we go anyway. I'm a garbage man in central Illinois. I have found plenty of cool stuff, old gaming consoles, and plenty of games that work. A sweet machete, a kid's bow compound bow, money, a dead deer, Nerf guns, BB guns, sadly pets, a sombrero, Viking helmet, herb pipes, herb, needles, crack pipes, lots of. One time this lady accidentally threw away her iPad. She was very unhappy. A Louis Vuitton wallet that I now use a Louis Vuitton purse, lots of laptops, and that's all I can really think of right now. Hope you guys enjoyed my list. P.S. Don't forget to tip your garbage man this holiday season. We love baked goodies, money, and beer. Sam? Story 28. 
I spent four summers working at a large recycling facility in Canada. People could drop off stuff that shouldn't go in their regular waste, chemicals, paint, oil, electronics. But we also had large bins to dump stuff that gets dealt with at the landfill. Furniture, Reno scraps, etc. Most hilarious moment? A lady in her late 50s was tossing boxes of garbage into the bin. Last one was a shoe box and she just wings it, attempting to get it to the back of the bin, I'm assuming. Doesn't the lid fly off and out come a horde of flying dildos? A half dozen wiggly, brightly colored pleasure rockets launched into the air for all to behold. She looked beyond mortified, hopped in her car, and nearly hit a customer in the yard. Amazing. Most disgusting. Well, people drop off fridges and freezers that are pooched. We are supposed to check them for food before we move them to their designated area because obviously gross. After we have enough and the CFCs are removed, we use a skid steer to dump it in a metals bin. On this fateful day, I was assisting the operator by helping to load them on the skid steer forks. And what do I spy? A large freezer with duct tape keeping it shut. As I tried to position it to be lifted by the forks, I realize it is as heavy as beached whale. Unreasonably heavy. Being the adorable idiot I am, I whip out a box cutter to see what treasures this chest holds for me. Boy, do I wish I hadn't. I was greeted with pounds and pounds of meat and meat juices that had been baking in the freezer in the sun for at least three days. It wriggled and pulsed with masses of maggots and had a smell that would make a corpse gag. I swear. Even after getting rid of it and the bin we dropped it in, the smell loomed the rest of the day. Story 29. My 86-year-old mother lives in a fairly affluent suburb of San Francisco, and every week on Sunday she does her run, which consists of going to the local grocery store and BART station to find valuable things. She picks up BART tickets that still have value that people just drop near the gates. She aggregates them into larger tickets and then provides them at a very discounted rate to a women's shelter which uses them for their clients. She picks up cans and bottles to turn them in for the deposit, even fishes them out of garbage cans if they are close to the top. She also finds a lot of money. But mom walks with a pronounced limp. She doesn't dress fancy, and she is very stooped over due to osteoporosis. People assume she is destitute and homeless and offer her help, or they drop money when she is close by and walk away for her to find it. Little do they know she owns a home worth over a million dollars free and clear and does not need to do this. She's doing quite well financially. It's mostly exercise for her. Anything she gets, she puts into her political fund, which she donates to Democratic candidates. Story 30. I'm not a garbage man, still I think this is extremely relevant. Where I live, not the U.S., people take out the trash in bags or bins to the street, and the garbage men just take it. We usually take out a bin or two, and our neighbors take out two black containers. One morning, we saw our neighbors trying to figure out why there was a third yellow container next to their usual bins. Turns out someone had set it there with a dismembered body inside. We called the cops and everything, but there was not much they could do. This was a couple of years back when things in Mexico City, where I live, weren't very safe. Story 31. Late to the game, but I have an uncle who had a refuse business back in the 90s. The coolest find ever was just about every single G.I. Joe action figure. There were a very large number of the vehicles too, but the figure collection was almost complete. My uncle contracted me to sort these so we could sell them at the community yard sale, and he said he'd pay me. Being like 11 and liking the idea of having money in my pocket, I went ahead and did it. We sold most everything, and I made around $60. I look back on that day and regret it. I wish I had the foresight at 11 to not sell those action figures. Story 32. I worked for a private waste management company for a summer. We specialized in hauling away rich people's hoarded goodies they'd crammed into their basement slash garage slash shed, etc. As others have mentioned here, finding valuable electronics, furniture, and collectibles was a daily occurrence. In the dispatch office, there was a list of odd requests people had made that, if found, were to be kept. All unofficial, the company policy was to donate anything of value. The role was a bit different from curbside pickup, since we had to negotiate with the people throwing stuff away. What sticks in my mind from this experience are two interactions. The first was a husband and wife, where the husband was clearly told to clear out his garage man cave. Lots of Star Wars collectibles and collectibles toys were sent to charity that day, along with the molds for his pee-pee and vagina-shaped wax candles. The second was a rich, middle-aged woman clearing out her basement, including the medals and plaques from her father's military service. There was a Canadian Air Force plaque from 1941 inscribed partially in German, commending his service. I thought it strange given the war with Germany at the time. I also found it incredibly sad that she gave no value to her father's exploits. Story 33. I used to work in my younger days as a manager at a recycling center. We picked up things a lot from the local police department. One box we opened had vials of what seemed to be dry blood and a huge stack of 8x10 photos, seemingly from the very early 80s. They were all of an accident scene, 
Some guy was driving his motorcycle and, from the look of things, T-boned the hood of a car at an intersection. It seems the car handlebars kept his legs from going too far. The lower torso and up, however, that was about 15 feet down the road. It actually looked like his intestines connected the two pieces of him for a while before they snapped. It was every bit as gory as anything I'd ever seen on the internet. I thought about sending them to one of those gross out sites, but then I remembered this guy was someone's family member and how awful it would be to run into that. I think they ended up in the shredder. Story 34. I was once working for a waste analysis company. We'd collect and analyze the contents of people's rubbish. Minging. One morning on the bin bag belt, we found a nice large box made of dun tropical hardwood. Inside it, padding of velvet. Nestling within its velvet nest was a vibrator the size, no exaggeration, of a fire extinguisher. And how shall I put this? It was obviously quite accustomed to going in the back door. It was crusted. Then, I remembered that morning while we were on collections, the fat bloke chasing down the road, demanding to know what we were doing with his rubbish. Gargantuan dildo ownership confirmed. One of many stories. Story 35. My mom is a caretaker, meaning she has to organize disposal of loads of left around the burrow. She's had some amazing finds from handmade sculptures and pieces of art. Her two best were a few boxes of expired printer cartridges. Turns out they're no longer made, so she sold them on eBay to a Japanese company who paid pound 50 per cartridge. Lucky she hadn't chucked them. By far, her best find was a discarded piano. She put it in the garage and asked a friend, my old nursery teacher they stayed in touch, to come and have a look as she used to apprentice building pianos when she was younger. When looking the piano over, she found her own signature hidden scratched into the internal wood. Turns out it happened to be the only piano she ever fully built herself. As she already had a piano, she told us to sell it, and it sold for £800 to a buyer in Edinburgh who hired a moving company to collect. She was utterly shocked how much it sold for. Pretty small world. Story 36. I'm not a garbage man, but I have worked at several sites dealing with different kinds of waste materials. First two were sites that dealt with hazardous waste. So you're looking at corrosives, toxics, flammables, etc. As such, we get a lot of stuff in that people think is dangerous, but it's not. We've had live bullets in from gun ranges, had a pallet, about 25x25 KDs bags, of ammonium nitrate, fertilizer, in before can be used to make bombs quite easily, had a pre-signed checkbook. But as it was from the police, we decided to let that one go. Had 5,000 L tours of yellow diesel in, would go well with the ammonium nitrate, Used to get lots of perfume testers from a major department store. Giant TVs, like 60 inches flat screen, used to gear a lot of alcohol in from government agencies and the like. At one of the non-hazardous sites I've worked the guys on site found 4,000 pounds in bin bags. One guy bought himself a car with his cut, recently been finding lots of games consoles, games, DVDs, and rare coins. You'll be surprised what people throw away. Story 37. Not a bin man, so luckily it never happened to me, but... I live in a seaside town that has a lot of out-of-towners down on the weekend for a drink or four. One summer's night a few years ago, a lad who was out on town and lost his mates decided to go to sleep in a massive rubbish bin to get out of the rain. Unfortunately for him, the pickup day for that bin was next morning, and because of the automated rubbish truck, his body was only discovered at the tip later that day after being crushed in the truck. It was pretty horrific when it happened. Now, all of our bins have warnings on not to sleep in the bin overnight, along with a diagram. I say this because a bin man must have discovered him at the tip. What a gruesome discovery. Be safe, kids. Story 38. Little late to the party, but I couldn't pass up telling this story. My dad is a bin man here in the UK, and I asked him this question a couple of years ago. And this was his answer. In the late 90s, he was on the 5 a.m. shift with three other guys. It was a dry winter morning and pretty much pitch black. And they arrived at the local swimming center to empty the bins as per usual. When they arrive in the car park, my dad, who was driving looked over at the bins on the other side of the car park and saw the outline of a person standing up inside the open industrial bin. He pointed it out to the others and they all saw it too. They reasoned that there are four of them and only one guy so they could take him if anything happened to get violent. After finally edging their way to the open bin, they realized it wasn't a person at all. It was one of those life-size blow-up love dolls. They had no idea how it got there, although we do live in the north of England just a short drive from Middlesbrough, so that might factor in. Story 39. Story I heard from a guy I know who works in construction. The guy was working in the house of a notary. There was a container in front of the house to put all the garbage and stuff in from breaking down walls and stuff. The notary who hired the construction worker threw away some old books with maps in them along with a lot of other stuff. The guy working there thought the maps were pretty nice and found a map of his hometown, which he tore out and took home with him. A few months later, someone was looking at the map and said, Hey, cool map, you should check out how much it's worth. 
which he did at a local antique seller, the Ant QA's dealer was willing to pay 500 euros for the map. He couldn't remember exactly how much, but there were around 15 books with around 20 maps in them, so yeah.